Hello there and welcome to today's video which is part one of my polymer clay wedding cake topper tutorial. This class or tutorial was created originally for Skillshare so it's really quite in depth so I would really recommend that uh, when it's ready that you watch the entire tutorial because I give quite a lot of tips and tricks throughout the videos so it's all worth watching before you get started on making your wedding cake topper. I'm going to be making a traditional bride and groom as the example but of course wedding cake toppers can be made for couples of all and every gender so you can you know take elements from how I've made my own models and create a super unique piece of art for yourself. One thing that I would mention and um, I never do this on my videos actually but this particular class was a real labour of love to make it took such a long time so if you get any value out of this video and you go on to make your own wedding cake topper it would really be so appreciated if you could maybe donate a coffee and I'll link to my coffee or coffee or however it's pronounced down below and if you're not in a position to do that um, another way that you can support the channel is by sharing this video or any of my videos actually because um, you know it all really helps to support the channel and enable me to make more videos like this one so for this particular class I'll be sharing with you what you'll need for this uh, tutorial and I'll also share some tips and tricks before you get started and then we'll move on to make the base of the topper and I think the groom's legs as well so let's go get started So for this class I'll be using Fimo Professional Polymer Clay as I use it for most of my project work and I personally say it's the best for making models or cake toppers. So I'll be using quite a lot of white for the dress and the base, grey, black, pink, green and skin tones and I will talk some more about skin tones during this class and I'll also be using some old spare clay. In terms of tools, I'll be using these here and I'll also leave a list of the tools that I use in class description. But to summarise, I've got a large cookie cutter in 98mm, some sturdy craft wire, some scissors, my scalpel, some ball tools, my needle tool, a blaze cutting tool and my acrylic roller. I'll also be using a teeny tiny leaf shaped tool and you can add some seed beads to your dress as well. I find that wet wipes are an essential tool for a polymer clay artist and I'll be going through quite a few in this class. And I'll also be using some Sculpey clay softener and some liquid Fimo. And last but not least, I'll be using my pasta machine which helps both to condition the clay and to ensure that you've got some nice flat clay to work with, particularly for the wedding dress. Before you move on to making your wedding cake topper, I thought I'd share some tips with you first. And tip number one is, if you can, to make a wedding cake topper out of some old clay first. I'm fully aware that this can be quite a tricky project at times, um, particularly when you're incorporating quite some detail so if you're able to and you do have some old clay to hand I'd suggest that you just try and play with that first of all really to try and get an idea of what your wedding cake toppers going to look like before you start using some really clean and pristine white clay basically. You could also if you like try and use some plasticine really so that you try and get an idea of how the form will come together before you start working with polymer clay. Tip number two and uh, this is for those that are going to be working on a traditional white dress for the brides. I would suggest having a whole block of the white clay around because um, I'm just fully aware that the cleaner your results will look at the ends, the better it will be really, particularly if it's going to be displayed on a, an actual wedding cake. Um, you want your work to look pristine really so I found that white clay particularly has a knack of picking up you know airborne fibres or tiny bits of debris that are kicking around and no matter how many wet wipes you use it can be tricky to try and keep your clay clean so I find if the uh, white clay that you're using is you know just really quite dirty 
I would suggest that you start again on it in all honesty but uh, you know that's entirely up to you but um, yeah I'd suggest having a whole block kicking around if you're working with a female professional and don't worry your white clay won't get wasted if you find that you have to start again because I would suggest that you have a bag of old clay kicking around for project work that um, you know you don't actually see on the end result such as and as in this class actually you know I use some old clay for under the skirts and for the groom's body so yeah keep a bag of old clay kicking around for project work because you will use it tip number three is take your time I found in the past that a wedding cake topper can take anywhere up to a week to make and I'd really recommend that you take regular breaks as well just to keep you kind of focused on your work really to ensure that it's nice and neat at the end. For tip number four, this is a useful one for when you're trying to keep your work nice and clean and also when you're working on larger projects, when you're working in stages basically such as this one is to cover your work when you're not working on it. White clay has a knack for picking up any tiny bits of airborne fibres etc so what I tend to do is to use a food bag uh, and that's a large food bag uh, on top of my work just you know to keep it in the corner away from everything else and it will keep it sort of dust free hopefully. And I'm going to move on to another tip now and that's how to get prepared for your projects. As with any larger scale polymer clay projects, I think it's always worth investing some of your time into really planning ahead and sketching out what you want your project to look like as I think the more time you invest into this process, the more successful your end result will be. And it will also allow you the opportunity to really think about what colours you'll need for your polymer clay projects. And to start the projects, I need to make the base for my topper, so I'm just going to condition some clay with my pasta machine here. And polymer clay, and particularly white polymer clay, has a knack of picking up tiny airborne fibres, so with my blaze cutting tool here, I'm just going to cut out any that I see, basically. And I'll try and flatten this a little with my hands before starting with my acrylic roller to flatten the clay. And I'd really advise working with parchment paper with any polymer clay project basically because firstly it will allow you to keep your clay nice and clean because you're not having to move it around with your fingers but also it will ensure that you're not putting any unnecessary indentations onto your clay work as well. And I've got my largest cookie cutter here, and that's 98mm. And of course you can create any shape for your base that you like really, but I'm going to go round. And I'll just pop that out, like so. So I'm just going to do my final clean with a wet wipe. And there is a slight ding in my base here, but I'm not too concerned about that because I'm basically going to hide it with my bride's skirts. So now I'm going to move on to making the groom's shoes. So I've got two balls of black polymer clay here and they're of exactly the same size. So I basically just need to make a, a very basic shoe shape like so. And it's almost reminiscent of a wine gum um, uh, sweets here in the UK. And they look of a similar size, which is good. So I want to add just a little bit of detail to the shoe, but you don't have to do this. But I'm using my needle tool basically to make a little indentation, like so. And I'll do the same on the other and just place that onto the base and in terms of placements I've got an old uh, wedding cake topper here that you'll see it's a little bit dusty but um, it's just to give you an idea about placements really so you need to take up basically almost half of the base for your groom or for each person really so Yep, hopefully that gives you an idea of where your shoes should be going. 
so I'm moving on to the trousers now but um, just as a little tip I'd recommend that you have lots of clay in the same colour because um, you'll be making the suit and the waistcoat as well a little later on. So you might well want to use a colour straight out of the packet so you, you know once you return to it it's exactly the same colour. But if you're using a bespoke colour just make sure you've got enough. So I'm just going to roll out a length of the grey clay like so. And with my blaze cutting tool, I'm just going to take the ends off. And then I'll just curve the clay over. And to attach the trousers to the shoes, I've just got a length of craft wire here. And it doesn't matter too much about the size or gauge of the, uh, the craft wire, just as long as it's pretty sturdy. And you could actually use cocktail sticks. So I've got some liquid Fimo here, so I'll just add a little dollop and I use it really because it helps to uh, make your pieces stick together basically during baking. So now I can just try and ease the trousers on, like so. And it just takes a little bit of time to ensure that you're headed in the right direction basically. And once they're added on, I'm just going to pop in some more craft wire at the top. So I'll add two pieces. And again, I'll add on some liquid Fimo, just to help the wire basically stick to the, the clay during baking. So I'm going to move on to the bride's body now. Well, the base of it anyway. And I've um, got some old pieces of clay here and I basically just need to, to make a little kind of lump really. Like so, so I just need to just try and condition that a little. And once I'm happy with that, I'm just gonna pop in two pieces again of the craft wire. And just really trying to force that in. I just press down on my surface really to try and get it to go all the way through. And again, some of my liquid Fimo. And then I can just try and plot out where I want that to go. And hopefully this is going to go over the ding that's in my um, base as well. So there we go, just push that down. And I'll add in some craft wire again. I'll just pop in the seconds. And some more liquid Fimo. I think I need to get another bottle of this now. And I'll just spend a little bit of time just working that into a very loose skirt shape or underskirt shape. So now it's time to bake our base. So I've just popped my base on a baking sheet that I use only for polymer clay work as you shouldn't be using tools that you use for clay with food as well. And I've got an old mug here as well, again, just for polymer clay work. And I'm using it just to prop up the trousers in case they decide to fall during baking, but hopefully that won't be the case and I've got just a little bit of parchment paper between the two as well so it doesn't stick. So this is now off to the oven and at this point you'll need to refer to your own brand of polymer clays bacon instructions. So that's the end of part one and I hope you enjoyed it. If you do have any questions on your wedding cake topper by all means leave those down below or on any of the other videos and if I get enough questions I'll perhaps do like a Q&A video at some point as well so in the meantime when it's ready part two should be available up there somewhere <laughs>